Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of my Kerbal Space Program Let's Play. In previous episodes, we've had relatively simple missions, and I'm excited to say that this is going to be the first of our complex missions. Um, so those previous missions were going into orbit and going to the moon, both free returns and landings. Um, but in all these previous missions, it's all been an individual ship that goes up collects the science, and then returns. This mission, we are going to be doing an Apollo-like mission where we have a command module and a lander. As you can see here, I'm currently working on the lander section of this mission. Our goal is to be able to bring two Kerbals down to the surface, both a pilot and a scientist. The pilot, for obviously piloting reasons, makes it easier to fly. The scientists, because they are able to reset science experiments that would otherwise be single use, which means that we are going to be able to potentially get more science overall than we would otherwise. It allows us to visit more biomes and get full science from those biomes. Now, we have that extra crew module there in the middle to provide extra room for our Kerbals to be in. It reduces the amount of damage that they take from uh, this health mod that we have. All right, I'm going to be a reasonable guy here and not expect any of you to want to sit through the entire build process of this lander. So jumping ahead to the end, you can see we've got science experiments up top. I'm also I'm a fan of being able to do this asymmetry here. That science collector and the mystery goo up top, they both weigh the same. So we're able to put both of those up there asymmetrically. Looks cool. Throw in some RCS on there now. We also have lights both for docking and for landing. Decent amount of RCS cans on the sides and SAS uh, on the bottom there for extra bits of control. I'm also a fan of this wide landing base that we have here that should make landing easier. We've also got that payload bay on the bottom there containing some batteries in addition to a few more science experiments. And at this point we're basically done with the lander. I think it's time to go ahead and jump on over to the command module. For building this command module, we start off with a pair of capsules that are capable of carrying three Kerbals. Because the plan here is to bring both the command module and the lander to the moon, land with the lander, rendezvous back with the command module, and then leave the lander behind in orbit of the moon because we don't need to bring it back to uh, Kerbin. Its, its mission has already been completed once it's landed and returned back to orbit of the moon. After we've imported that lander, it's time for us to build the transfer stage. So earlier we made sure to disable fuel transfer between those two docking ports that are connecting these two sections. Then we just throw a big honking fuel tank on that command module, a few solar panels and batteries so that it will have at least a minimal amount of energy. And then those pool, that, that poodle engine there is very efficient in vacuum. Uh, so right here we've got 2200 meters per second, including when we're pushing the command module, which means that we will almost certainly have plenty of fuel to get us to the moon and back once this is in space. Once the transfer stage is finished, it's time for us to begin working on our lifter stage that will bring us from the Kerbal Space Center up into low Kerbin orbit. Now. This is a lot of trial and error. You don't necessarily need to see this whole process, so we can jump towards sort of the finished result here. And if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that we are just about at our mass limit, which is our primary limiting factor. That's why we've got these tiny little uh, solid rocket boosters on here. I had originally had larger ones on there, but that pushed us over our mass limit. So these little guys are on here. They're only going to burn for 8.8 .8 seconds, but they'll give us a nice little kick of initial velocity to get us going. You can see we've also got large side boosters there. Uh, those will drain before the center booster. Should be able to push us quite a bit higher through the atmosphere and then hopefully that center booster there will be able to place us into a nice Kerbin or orbit. With that booster finished, we go ahead and jump forward to the launch. You can see I changed around the paint scheme a little bit here. Those solid fuel boosters, just like I said, they're going to burn very, very quickly. We start off with a quick little roll here to set us up for a good gravity turn. Get rid of those solid rocket boosters after we only make it to 400 meters up before they run out. But 
a nice little boost getting us up to it was around 40 meters per second when we let go of them and then from here it's a pretty standard launch At about 20 kilometers up, we start to get a little more aggressive with our gravity turn, and everything is going pretty much nominally so far. The only concern that I have here is the amount of delta V. I'm starting to realize as this launch continues that we probably don't have enough to execute this entire mission. And in fact, I'm going to have to start dipping into the transfer stages delta V in order to even reach low curb in orbit. So with this, I've got two options. I can either revert back to the vehicle assembly building and try to adjust my ship so that then we can reach orbit with more fuel, transfer over to the moon, take this, take this all out in one launch. But I'm already hitting my mass limit, so that's going to be difficult. The other option is to put this into low carbon orbit using the transfer stage and then send up a refueling mission to enable the transfer stage to actually be able to reach the moon. And that's what we decide to do here. So once this circularization burn is complete and we are pretty confident that everything is going to be okay, we will go ahead and get working on this refueling mission. With this being a refueling mission, the ship is pretty simple overall, so we don't need to go through the build process. I can just talk you through a bit of what we have here. Uh, overall, this is just, we're, our, our goal is just to lift a fuel tank up into orbit. Uh, we're throwing a bunch of extra monoprop on there so that we have enough RCS. This is going to be heavy, so we'll have to use a lot of RCS to push it around. Those two side boosters, those, those little solid rocket boosters there at the bottom. We're very close to our mass limit again, uh, but we should be able to successfully get at least this entire fuel tank that is up on top into orbit there. With construction of the ship having been completed, it is now time to launch into low carbon orbit, try to get a rendezvous with our moon lander and command module, and see if we can't refuel that mission. As you can see, this launch is going much smoother than the previous one. An earlier gravity turn and an abundance of Delta V means that we will almost certainly be able to successfully pull off this refueling mission here. Apparently I didn't like that first circularization burn too much. I'm not 100% sure why. I thought it looked good in post here, but I go ahead and set this one up uh, and then realize that I've already passed when I should start burning. So uh, we just kick it off immediately. Aim a little bit up to keep ourselves from reaching our apoapsis, but right here we're trying to get a lot, uh, around a 40 kilometer orbit so that we are below the the command module and lander so that we travel faster around Kerbin than them and then can set up a nice transfer for ourselves. I sincerely doubt that I will get a better segue than that, so we go ahead and jump forward a little bit in time to after when our circularization is complete and it's time to set up our transfer. As you can see, I end up targeting Bob, which confused me a bit. I, I thought it was a glitch, but it turns out that I had unintentionally left Bob outside of the ship. I, I, I brought him out to get some EVA science and then left him out there. He's close enough to the ship, though, that rendezvousing with him will essentially allow us to rendezvous with the ship. And once I get to him, I'll just have to move him uh, using RCS back to the ship. Now, you can see here I jumped. I, I clicked those buttons. If you right-click on a maneuver node, it gives you buttons that allow you to jump forward and back in uh, orbits. So I'm just setting up my rendezvous here. I'm going to have to wait for a few orbits. It's an hour and 47 minutes. So right here, I actually go back to the Space Center, fast forward from there because it's it's faster to fast forward from there than it is in low carbon orbit. And then we will go ahead and make our transfer burn. Jumping forward a little bit here to right before our transfer burn, our goal here is to get within a couple kilometers, single digit number of kilometers 
from Bob and this moon mission uh, at our closest approach. So because we're on a lower orbit right now, we are traveling faster than them. So we are a little bit behind them and we're setting up what's called a home in transfer here. So as you can see on the opposite side of Kerbin, our closest rendezvous, those two arrows up and down that just disappeared. <laughs> Uh, and we'll, we'll reappear right here. I'm just hovering uh, my mouse over it now and waiting until that separation is about as low as I can get it. And anything under 15 kilometers is good, but the closer that you can get it, the better, because then you're going to be spending less fuel and less time actually making the encounter happen. We end up getting a separation of around 1.5 kilometers and our relative speed is under 40 meters per second which means that this will be a quite easy rendezvous to pull off once we get close. Now this is targeting Bob so I'll just go ahead and jump forward to when we're actually encountering with the moon mission. We've gotten ourselves down to a lovely 1.5 kilometers away. Just fast forwarding at around 30 meters per second right now. And our goal here is to end up around 100 meters away. That'll make it very easy for us to actually execute the final stage of this rendezvous and dock these ships together. We play around with the thrust limiter a little bit here to make sure that we can accurately land ourselves at about 100 meters away. And then once we have slowed our relative velocity adequately, we switch over to the command module and get ready to dock and refuel. Later on, I'll show off my much more methodical docking procedure, but right here, the refueler ship actually ran out of monopropellant and didn't have any reaction wheels, so we had to come in at a bit of an awkward angle. It ends up not working super well, but we go in for a second pass here and end up making contact. I realized once this docking completed that I didn't have fuel transfer, so I had to go back to the space center, purchase the upgrade for the research lab, which we needed to do anyway because we need to uh, increase the maximum level of science that we can purchase. But once that's taken care of, we go ahead and transfer all this fuel over. I had been considering possibly bringing this fuel tank with me and then detaching it partway through the burn, but I figured that's just a, it's not super necessary. We'll have tons of Delta V anyway. So I actually set up this uh, lifter here, this, this booster stage as a impactor for a future moon mission. Now that those names are properly taken care of, it is time for us to go ahead and dock back up with the lander. Jumping forward to the final approach here, we're about 60 meters away, proceeding quite slowly, and this is how I usually carry out docking procedures. I control from one of the from the docking port that I would like to dock with, point it at the docking port of the ship that is coming in to dock, so that all that you have to do is just use RCS to push your ship forward slowly. Uh, any sort of having to traverse laterally or vertically just adds an extra complexity and I, I find this to be the most consistent and easy way of pulling off docking procedures. With those ships pointed at each other, this is coming into the final little bit of this mission. We just need to make sure that this docking procedure works just fine and then we will have tons of Delta V to get us to the moon and pull off a landing and return. After proceeding quite slowly, sub millimeter per second, usually I like to get down to 0.1 meters per second for the actual final little bit of the docking here. But we dock cleanly, everything is taken care of, and we are ready to head to the moon, which we'll do in the next episode. Until then, thank you to everyone for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again.